Theresa Tam knew about the procurement issues Canadians faced for personal protective equipment before the pandemic hit in March of 2020, and she just simply failed to procure it. We have the government documents to prove it. Warning, censorship. Tamara Ugolini here with Rebel News and our Chief Public Health Officer of Canada, that's Theresa Tam, has shown numerous shortfallings all throughout the management of this COVID crisis. As early as January of 2020, when Canadians were starting to hear rumblings about some sort of novel virus in China that was being heavily propagandized by the Chinese Communist Party, our very own health chief, she was reassuring Canadians that there was nothing to worry about. And she even went so far as to denounce travel advisories and potential border closures as racist. But we now we know that Tam was fully aware of the procurement issues with personal protective equipment, that's also called PPE, and chose to largely do nothing about it. On January 29th of 2020, a blacked out emailer writes from Whitehorse, which I can speculate was the Yukon Medical Officer of Health or one of his staffers, who's now the Liberal MP, Brendan Hanley. They wrote asking, I guess, the Public Health Agency of Canada to issue a statement back to them about mask use in the territory. They further say, from what I've read, it's probably not a bad idea for people with cold or flu symptoms, even to prevent spread of regular cold slash flu, and maybe for those traveling overseas, question mark. The medical supply store in Whitehorse says some people have been buying them by the box. To which someone on page 63 responded saying, this is obviously happening across the country and may cause problems for those who really may benefit from mask use, i.e. people at home with illness, whether corona or TB, that's tuberculosis, or other. I wonder if we could add this to the list of to-dos, i.e. perhaps a statement from Teresa advising on the limited evidence to support public mask use as protective, or is this better made at jurisdictional level? Up until at least April of 2020, Tam denounced universal masking. Prior to the pandemic pandemonium that ensued in Canada, um Putting a mask on a asymptomatic person um, is not beneficial, obviously. On page nine of the document, it shows that on February 14th, 2020, Tam was contacted by someone who wanted to apply to the Canadian Institute for Health Research's call for rapid response to the novel virus. It turns out that this was in relation to a funding opportunity launched by the government of Canada, whose total allotted amount for the endeavor was $1.5 million over two years. The opportunity aims to align with the efforts of international partners, including the World Health Organization, which we know Tam has questionable conflicts with as she sits on their independent oversight and advisory committee for the health emergencies program. After Tam's massive fumblings and flip-flops, this connection had people asking questions like, does Tam work for Canadians or the China-centric WHO, the World Health Organization? Carrying on to this weird funding pitch, Tam is asked if she'd be interested in being a knowledgeable user on the grant pitch. If not, she is asked to at least provide a brief note acknowledging the importance, both in Canada and globally, of such a grant. A few days prior on February the 9th, it looks like a report and inventory was compiled by the director at the Public Health Agency of Canada. This document was prepared by Ness, that's the National Emergency Strategic Stockpile, and provides a personal protective equipment update to the government. Now, all of the actual stockpiled amounts have been blacked out, but on page 24, the asterisks beside hand sanitizer, N95 masks, and surgical gowns notes that they're in high demand and apparently on order. Yet for some reason, the Public Services and Procurement Canada spent time dilly-dallying assembling teams. On page 27 of the documents, the PSPC, again, that's the Public Services and Procurement Canada, had finally assembled a dedicated team to deal with the actual procurement. If you go down to the third bullet, they say that the first order was placed on March 12th. That's over four weeks after the need was first identified. The day before, on February 8th, Tam instructed Jennifer Holligan, who at the time in February of 2020 was the Associate Deputy Minister at Health Canada, 
who has a degree in journalism and a certificate in public sector leadership, to delete a media statement about bringing Canadians back from Wuhan. During that time, let me remind you that staff in healthcare settings, especially those who care for the highest risk populations, were reusing PPE, yet were simultaneously being touted as champion infection controllers while the government fumbled. Later on March 3rd, and shown on page 48 of the document, Tam says, I think we need to ensure that we have good language in there that a key objective of the COVID-19 response is to protect healthcare workers who are delivering patient care. Not a targeted approach, not a cocooning of the vulnerable and at-risk population, just general protection of healthcare workers while well, her own agency sits on 55 million expired N95 masks. Talk about epic failures. On page 48 of the documents, it looks like a mere few days later, on March 7th, 2020, a special advisory committee secretariat mentions that references to N95 supply issues should be removed. And the statement should instead focus on evidence of the potential harms of using N95s when used inappropriately. Alberta Health Services has an entire document about this, and Table 1 summarizes adverse reactions to mask use in the general population, outlining segments such as children, individuals with respiratory disease, sensory concerns, skin-related concerns, and pregnant women. For some reason, though, Canadians didn't hear about any of these stipulations. And the mask flip-flopping ensued from there. Looks like everyone was running around like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off from our supposed experts who are supposed to lead the general population to, of course, just the lay people. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. If you like this report, and maybe you would also enjoy our paywalled content, you can sign up at rebelnewsplus.com to gain exclusive access to in-depth, full-length shows and hear the latest discussions around global happenings. Sign up today at rebelnewsplus.com.